This is an extra large 20,000 plus gallon rainwater harvesting system in Ramona, California. That's got tanks in multiple locations. There's tanks at the far corner of the property, tucked under the trees there. This is for the shed. The entire house is collected and routed underground via a wet system that routes down to a set of five and ten thousand gallon tanks. Or I forget the size, but to a set of tanks down there. So a wet system gathers all the gutters from the house into these PVC pipes. These route underneath the ground here. The wet system does not need to have slope, so it's a watertight system. And I'm walking on top of a buried three inch pipe here. I exposed this clean out. The gophers have filled this thing up, but there's clean outs in this. So you could theoretically take out this and flush out the water from a downspout. So the pipes come through underground from all the downspouts. So all these downspouts on the house here are routing through this three inch pipe. And it's not often we have an opportunity to do a full house collection system. It's also not usually seldom necessary because most of the time the customers don't have enough tanks to justify collecting the whole house. It's definitely not a problem on this property. Um, so downspouts routing down. There's, there's clean out points where the system can be theoretically flushed out. The gophers have done their thing so we'll put that back in here and then this job has a pump system that will distribute the water all over the property however many acres this is customer had this old well tank it's kind of offline so we brought all the downspouts down through the yard cut this slot in the road for the power and cut that slot in the road for the water pipes so my water pipes come through down the slope here there's um, the four inch line from the house comes and it's actually this is full of water because it's the level of the tank is where the water goes into the tank is higher than this these are sleeves this is this white line is to connect water to the tanks from the house so when you have a fully automated system like this you want to run a line from the city water or from the house water to the tanks and typically there's going to be a float valve that will keep about the bottom 10 percent of the water in the tanks so on this job we place this line, this is an incoming line in the same trench. This three quarter inch line comes up. It's an inlet for the city water. That the homeowner will hook up later. It's a fairly complicated system here in that the water comes from the pipes from the house. It comes um, out of the ground from the house in this four inch pipe. It comes up. This is a first flush device that I built, six inch first flush device. That's the sediment trap, and it uh, can be cleaned out. Um, and then this is set up because we had so much rain in California. Or on any system, the overflow has to be thought about. So when this tank system is full, that overflow can be hooked up and that actually runs out to the street. And these valves at the tanks. So on this particular system, 
there's a gravity line coming out from the tank so you could drain the water from the tanks with this just gravity line there's a shutoff valve here so um, when I build these water level gauges I do recommend these stay in the off position this is the off position this is the on position it's a good idea to keep it in the off position and turn it on when you want to see how much water is in the tank it's a clear tube that goes up tanks full and the reason that is is because sometimes animals will chase you this wanting to get to the water and if that happens you can lose all the water in the tank um, we installed so this is the isolation valve to shut the water off from this tank from going into the other tank so basically he's set up to where you can distribute the water from this tall tank into these other tanks by opening up this valve it will fill these tanks to the same height as this one and so to normally speaking you'd want to have one or the other open but not both assuming that this tank is full because this tank is taller than these other ones you need to keep this closed until these tanks get drained and you transfer the water from the tall tank into the other tanks by opening this valve a lot of moving parts relatively simple this is in the closed position that's in the open position and so this tank this valve here is in the open position because it's feeding the pump so this line comes out the winch line goes back to the tanks through these trenches that can now be filled and it feeds the pump system overflow from the tank it's probably kind of small for a giant rain so it's possible that the overflows water could come out the top of the tanks in a giant rain there is a gravity spigot at the end of this and plug a hose into that and then this is a Grunfos um, 220 30 amp or I mean a it's a one horsepower pump so this is a pressure activated pump system I use the, the gold pump and has a pressure tank has a smart controller so this is a um, variable speed pump system what that means is it, it will produce as much pressure as the line is pulling out of it so it can, it can produce a little like that, or it can produce a little. This is the inline from the tanks. These are check valves. This is to bleed air out of the system this is also to bleed air out of the system this is the prime port on the pump pump should never lose prime but if it does take this bolt out until water comes out of it and you build your sprinkler irrigation from here this can be sprinkler valves or it can go to your tank each one of these Just pulling water from the pump and this should never as far as I know these do not need to be repressurized but there's this there's a bike tire valve here these stayed about 14 pounds I think never had to fill those up this is the um, pressure sensor of the smart controller these can be Placed by unscrewing it and order them from Grunfos. Never had any go bad, but they are said to go bad. And that's pretty much it.